Uh, good morning once again. My name is Mapule Molabi. As I said, I'm the founder of Growing Mess. Growing Mess is a new company. It's a private company. It offers um, online uh, lessons for maths, uh, uh, physics, chemistry, and we also just introduce accounting. And then we have partnered with Education Support SA, but they are absent today. Absent today. They, it's, it's a, what do you call it? It's a non-profit organization. They assist learners with um, anything uh, related to applying online or choosing, making the right choice. So a similar uh, thing that we are doing today. But uh, if, if you get in touch uh, with them anytime, they're able to assist you with that. So welcome uh, today. This Kira Expo is um, targeted to grade eight, any grade eight to 12 uh, learners. Uh, the idea is that uh, the, if the learners, they attend this uh, similar events every, if they start earlier, then they are able to learn about more uh, available careers out there and they will see which one they fit in by the time they get to grade 10 to choose subjects at least then by then they are aware of um what which subject they need to choose so this is uh, actually the motive behind this thing so we just don't want the 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 the, the, the learners to choose careers blind uh, uh, blindly like some of us we did back then because we didn't have any any knowledge or any guidance so this is why we are here today okay so this is the meeting details if you are here you already have this uh, details uh just a note uh please note that the meeting is recorded we know that we are aware that there are new rules so please the meeting is recorded and we're hoping that uh if you are here you don't mind being recorded especially our speakers because we we'll normally ask them to put their videos on Please, if you don't mind, because we will share the recording on Facebook, we'll share it on YouTube. So if you don't mind your face, if you don't mind, please, then you can just not put on your camera. And then the other thing, we normally just take a screenshot of pictures of uh, when people are presenting. So please indicate if you don't mind, then we will just avoid that when you are doing your presentation. Okay. So the presentation guide, the presentation is, we have guidelines for our presentation. We're giving each speaker a 20 minute slot. And these are the points that we had requested that they structure their presentation. But if you didn't follow this, it's not a trend smash, as long as uh, the learners get to get the information that they require. So it will be your educational pathway, why you chose this career, the highlights of your career, the challenges you face in your in your um, in your job and how you manage to overcome that, and then which subjects and grades uh, can the learner uh, do in order to to follow that uh, career you are in or in that field, and then also which institutions um, does that career where can they do that? So which institution offer those careers, and then you can just tell us uh, briefly about the other career paths that are available in your faculty, if that's possible. Okay, so this is our agenda for today. Uh, the first one is already what I'm doing, the opening and welcome. And then our second item will be the career presentation from a uh, different professional. So they're given 20 minutes each. We're gonna start with the motivational speaker. And then the second item will be the drone technology, which uh, he has electronic engineering background. And then we've got teaching, we've got public admin administration and research. We've got firefighting, we've got fitness and training, nursing, project management and industrial engineering. And then the last one is human resource and law. Then, oh, apologies. So the, the numbering now is incorrect. Then after that, we'll have the question and answer session and then closing. So please note, some of the uh, speakers did not send through the presentation. So uh, hopefully they will still pitch. So if they're not, please just uh, um, bear with us on that one. So we'll skip if someone is not here. Right. So we will now start with, a, I have someone assisting me. So his name is Alex. So if you see a message uh, in the in the chat or something, yeah, Alex is here to assist me. So you can just uh, just try to get in touch with him on the chat 
if there's anything, because when I'm busy presenting, I uh, might not be able to see on the other controls. Okay, so for the learners, if you have any questions during uh, the presentation, we will have the question and answer session at the end. But if you have a question that maybe you think you might forget it during, uh, to, uh, you might forget by the time we get to the last uh, part, you can just drop the question in the chat box. Then we'll deal with it when we get to the end. Okay, so thank you for coming. So we will start with our first uh, item uh, or our first speaker, which is the motivational speaker and his name is Xavier Smith. So I will hand over to Xavier uh, Smith for him to tell us more about uh, his, uh, to motivate the learners. Thank you, Mr. Smith, over to you. All right, thank you, Mapule. Okay, good, man, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Xavier Smith and I come from Stanerton in Mpumalanga. I hope you can hear me clearly, Mapule. Can you please confirm? Yes, I can hear you. Just a moment. Your slide is the one that I had a problem with. So I just want to switch and just uh, share the your specific one on this one. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Right. Okay. Like I said, yes, my name is Xavier Smith and I come from Stanerton, which is a small town in Mpumalanga. I can think you can call it a small farm town. This is where... I was born, this is where I grew up, this is where I attended high school and where I worked my first job. So yeah, I will start my, I just wanna share my journey with you of um, how education has helped me to develop a career. So, and yeah, I just wanna take you from high school to where I am today. I think um, that will be enough. But um, I would like to say thank you for, for joining and um, taking this opportunity to listen to all these professionals who can help you, guide you in your future. Like Mapule said earlier, some of us, we, we, we took what sounded nice. We didn't really know anybody who were professionals, especially in my community. I'm, I can, can tell you certainly there were no engineers and lawyers and doctors. You, your information of what you're gonna study is basically got it from university prospectus or what teachers told us it's and, I, and I don't think they they knew the ins and outs of these careers so yes my can I have the next slide please so when I was in high school I, I was like everybody I had uh, big dreams of what do I want to become one day and want to be successful but um, I think coming from a, from a, how can I say underprivileged background, it was quite difficult because even in high school, if you get even if you go home with the highest marks, and it doesn't really change your situation at home, and and these things can be become very um, demotivating, and it can build a lot of insecurities when you go to school and you have less. And not to make excuses, but I think this this led to some bad decisions when I was younger in high school and um, I won't get into those too much but bad decisions usually start taking effect in your life and leading to to other bad things and I think that led to uh, uh, me getting a lot of bad bad marks and this kept on to about <laughs> until I got to matric and somehow in matric you tend to wake up and, and it's almost almost like it's too late but when I was in matric, there was definitely good people around me. The teachers were really good. And even the other learners were quite uh, motivational to, to, to share their experiences with you. And um, starting to, to push towards the end of matric, it's where I at least got to pass matric and at least I had a chance again. This is where I... But after matric, I didn't apply for any universities, so I had to go work. And my first job was in, uh, I worked in a chicken factory where my job was to cut full chickens into mixed portions. So you can imagine this is not really a challenging job. It's challenging in the sense that it was long hours. We worked about 12 hour shifts, shifts and it was day shift and night shift. And when you are there cutting those chickens and you see other professionals like the engineers and the accountants and the HR managers walk through, 
it that kind of motivated me to think no something needs to change and that gave me an idea to go to Tibet college what we'll looking out next slide please Tibet College, I chose that basically because um, my mother taught, my mother worked there and I got a 50% discount. And this was one of the reasons I went. And I, when I was there, I decided to do electrical engineering. So when I was there, I worked really hard. I think those chickens opened my eyes and I worked very hard and I, and I studied and I got really good marks. I was even impressed with the good marks I got. And I always used to, for most of my subjects, I got distinctions and I got my money back because at, at that TV at college, it was like 80% you get back when you get a distinction. So that also, and some of the lecturers said, you, I'm getting really good marks and they recommended I could do S courses. Now, S courses is what you do at, um, at the University of Technology. And at this time, my brother was a was an artisan because he also went to Tibet College and he was an artisan. And he he gave me a chance to go to um, the University of Technology. And when I got to the University of Technology, which was UJ in Johannesburg, it was more of the same. I was just doing very well. I I studied very hard and I got good marks and I secured a bursary in the second semester, which is known as S2. I got a bursary from the Department of Public Works, Malanga. They were they were really it was really a good bursary. It, it covered all my fees, it covered my accommodation, and it covered my food, my textbooks, everything. So this was really for as you can imagine. By this time, I was I didn't have much money. I haven't worked for a while. So this was really good for me and um, things were looking up. You can give me the next slide, please, Mapule. And while I was at the uh, University of Technology, um, British American Tobacco, it's a company in Heidelberg, they came to campus to recruit people. And because um, I was a learner who did really well, I had quite good marks. Um, I was one of the, the people they chose to come do in-service training at their facility in service training is a uh, two two uh, two semesters of practical training which you do when you're studying uh, engineering at the university of technology that was the case back then anyway um, british american tobacco paid really well so it was about three times what i would have earned if i did my in service at um, at the department of uh, public works so i found my um, the person i worked with there and I asked him, is it okay if I do my in-service somewhere else? He said, that's fine. As long as when I qualify, I come to work for public work because that was a bursary agreement. And after um, my contract wasn't renewed after a year at PAT, so, but that was okay because I had a bursary to go to and I was sure I had a job there. And so to push my luck, I kind of phoned the, the bursary people and asked them, would it be okay if I do BTEC? BTEC is, the, is another year after your national diploma, which you do a bachelor's in technology and mechanical engineering. So I asked them, could I stay on for another year? And they said that was fine. They will pay for it. So that was perfect for me. And while I was doing my BTEC, I got a job at the University of Johannesburg as a tutor and a lab technician. And it was, I also still got good marks, not like as good as in the diploma, but still good marks considering I was working and earning. And after that, when I graduated, I got um, uh, contacted by my bursary that they did not place me. And I don't know, somehow they forgot about me and they did not place me for a job somewhere. And I waited for them. I literally called them every day for about a month. And I realized the reality was that I'm unemployed. And unemployed was really one of the, the worst times of my life, that unemployment, because um, I was so ashamed because I worked so hard and I actually got a degree and I was sitting at home uh, without work. And I applied to countless companies, no response. I think it was about three months that I just sat in, in a house. I didn't even want to come out before, before four o'clock, before four o'clock is when working people come home. So that's when I usually came out. So it doesn't look so bad. As soon as 
those three months were over, the bursary contacted me and said, it's fine, I can find another job. My obligation to them is basically canceled because they can't place me. And I kept applying. And luckily enough, I got a job at the uh, aerospace in the aerospace industry, which was Danelle Dynamics. And funny enough, this was my dream job. So it was almost like being unemployed was meant to be because it gave me a chance to apply to the dream, the company I really wanted to work for. It, it was really good training year. I was about there for 10 years. I worked my way up to become a department manager. And I learned a lot of transferable skills and opportunities to grow. But um, my my fiance at the time moved to England and um, I felt that I need to follow her. And so I applied for, I came for holiday to England first. I thought, okay, I can do this. So then I applied for a work visa in England and that went surprisingly quick. I didn't have enough time to, se to secure a job in England by that time. I applied, but it wasn't enough time. So when they give you a visa, you have about a month to leave the country, whether you have a job or not. And so I had to leave. So when I got to England, it was unemployment. I call it unemployment round, round two because um, I've been here before. But this time I, I had experience of not of not being employed and I was just confident that I'll get a job. And I applied and it was about one month without a job, stayed in a one bedroom flat. Uh, um, sharing a kitchen with other people. So it was quite tough for that month, but I secured a job in a, in a makeup factory and it was quite, uh, it was a, basically a technician job. So it was a big step down for me, but it was fine. I did that for six months and I just thought I can't do this anymore. I need something better. And I resigned and then it was unemployment round three. But like I said, the previous two gave me experience. So I was quite confident if I just keep working hard and applying, I'll get an, another job. And I went, uh, I failed to get a job for quite a few months. I went back to South Africa. And, but I kept applying to the UK and I secured a job in the UK and I came back, which was a really good job. And that gave me the opportunity to make UK my home. And I have a son here now and I'm quite settled here now. Um, I tried not to drag this on too much, so I was quite fast. But if anything, that if there's anything you can take from my story, I would just like to share with you that as students, sometimes things don't work out the way you plan it to work out and you don't get the marks you want and you don't get into the university you want, but just keep pushing. There is always another way. Hard work always pays off and um, if you can just follow my journey, it was not a shortcut, but I still got where I wanted to be. So thank you, that's me. Thank you, Xavier. Uh, would you still be around uh, to the end of the program? Or oh, I'm asking that so that if you will leave, then we can allow if there are any questions, uh, people can ask questions. My pleasure. Uh, you will still be around. Zelia, I didn't hear that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So, uh, the next, our next uh, presenter. Sorry, Mafule, I couldn't hear you, but I got the gist of it. I, I, I think you'll be, I believe you asked. Yeah. Yes. Can you I, hear me now? Yes. All right. Apologies about that. The network is not <laughs> cooperating today. Uh, I was asking Xavier if you will remain until the end of the program, so we can leave the, those that have questions for you to the end. Am I audible? Can you guys hear me? 